All right, so this is going to be our introduction to the sentences, guys. Um, and this should go right along with your packets. You want to fill this stuff in as we go. Okay. So first, first bit of information that we want to make sure we run through um, is our definition of what receptors are. So here it is. Um, so uh, receptors are going to be specialized cells that monitor specific conditions in the body or external environments. So there's lots of categories here. They can be um, uh, the chemoreceptors that can detect chemicals. There are mechanoreceptors that we can to detect touch. There are photoreceptors in your eyes. Um, all sorts of different things, but they've got to be able to be stimulated by something in the environment. And that's what makes them a receptor. And when they reach threshold, they're going to pass the information on to the central nervous system. That's important, guys. It doesn't always go to the brain because sometimes the spinal cord can respond to things. But brain or spinal cord, that's what this stands for, remember, um, in the form of action potentials or impulses. You could also use that in there um, along the axon of the sensory neuron. So that's input going in. All right. Not on your packet, but something I want you to be aware of. Um, they're not all the same. All receptors are not exactly the same. Uh, they have uh, varying sensitivity. That's important. Okay, so uh, some are going to be sensitive to really light touch versus others you have to push much harder on. Um, uh, some respond to um, uh, a, a different wavelength of light, so they actually vary a little bit. Um, and then they also have this idea of receptive field. And you can actually see that better in the next picture, but let me run through it first. So area is monitored by a single, re the area that is monitored by a single uh, receptor cell. Um, so here's a picture kind of showing the receptive field, okay? Um, and when we look at this, you've got one neuron here, right? Here's another neuron. And this is the area that it's responsible for taking in the information about in this one. So this could be uh, two, two uh, cold receptors. Um, and if you put something cold here, this one's going to send the signal. If you put it here, it's going to send the signal. If it hits both of them, then it's going to send the signal. Um, they're both going to send impulses to the brain. So uh, they actually have a certain area that's designated to each one of the neurons. So it's called, referred to as a receptive field. Receptive field. So going back to your packet now, um, the next thing you guys had to get down was the idea of sensation. So sensation is this little chunk here, okay? So it's a conscious awareness of the stimulus, or uh, the way I tend to put it is it's the brain's interpretation of the action potentials. And as you can see, it's, it, it all happens in the brain. So all touch, pain, temperature, pressure, all happens in the brain, guys. All we do is send the action potentials. So when you, like, stub your toe, your toe doesn't actually feel the pain. It just sends action potentials to the brain. Then your brain has to interpret and say, ouch, that's, and recognize that's coming from the toe. Um, I'm going to show you a couple examples, guys, uh, where that can be mistaken, uh, where things can get messed up in there, because all that happens in the brain, all right? Um, the next one you guys had at, on there is the idea of projection, okay? So it doesn't do any good for your brain to feel pain. If you can't locate it, if you can't recognize that it's actually my foot hurting, that it is um, that somebody's tapping me on my shoulder, none of that is useful. So the brain then projects, and essentially what that does is it kind of places um, a sensation uh, so it feels like it's coming from a certain area. So you feel like there's information coming from that area, okay? Um, and it's, it all, it's all a construct to your mind, okay? Nothing actually happens. If I stub my toe, the signal doesn't get sitting back down to my toe, but my brain becomes kind of aware of my toe hurting, and it kind of makes it feel like my toe's hurting, even though all that happens is it sends some action potential. So there's no actual pain happening in my foot, okay? Uh, so that's the idea of projection. It's kind of a weird idea. Next vocab word you guys have on there is adaptation, okay? And what happens is if you have constant stimulus, your brain tends to filter it out, okay? Uh, new information your brain deems really important. Constant information it kind of filters out. So, for instance, if you think about right now, um, think about your, um, well, you're sitting down someplace, right? So think about your butt, okay? The bottom of your butt. Um, can you feel the seat underneath you? All right, so you can feel that if you think about it, okay? But your brain kind of filtered that out and you stop thinking about that. Um, and... Uh, your brain does this really well for um, anything that's not painful, okay? So uh, painless stimuli are kind of the exception to this rule, but are, are painful stimuli the exception to the rule. Um, but uh, think about your environment around you. Can you, like, listen and think of, uh, can you hear a fan blowing around you or your computer humming or anything along those lines? That's information that's being sent in, but your brain kind of filters it out because you don't want to have sensory overload and have too much information coming in, and that's all part of adaptation. So the next one on your list is this idea of transduction. I uh, we'll actually have a slide here, so we're going to kind of squeeze this in here. So transduction, um, it's whenever one of these um, 
receptors converts whatever the stimulus is into an action potential. So when your eye takes the, the photons coming into the eye and converts that into an action potential, or the pressure in your finger gets converted into an action potential by the touch receptor, or the chemicals on your tongue get converted into an action potential. So it's that changing of information. So it's going from chemical to an action potential or light to an action potential. That is referred to as transduction. So that's what all of your receptors actually are capable of. They're capable of transduction. That's what makes them special. All right, the next thing on there is referred pain. Okay, and you'll see that down here, but let's talk about it a little bit. So we mentioned that sensation all happens in the brain. That's the brain's interpretation of the action potentials. And that projection is the placing of that sensation. That all happens in the brain, okay? So sometimes the brain can mess these things up, okay? So you can have people that hallucinate and they'll actually see things that aren't actually there because you get action potentials in the wrong parts of the brain. Um, but this is a more uh, common occurrence here. Um, so uh, the most classic example is, is a heart attack, okay? So when a person feels a heart attack, they often feel the pain in the left arm, okay? And there's nothing wrong with the left arm. The heart actually is sending action potentials up to the brain. But the brain is confused about it. It doesn't know what that action potential means. So it misinterprets it. It messes up the sensation. It gets confused here and then projects the signal out where it thinks it's coming from, um, which is the shoulder. And it ends up being a mistake. Um, the, the pain's actually come from the heart. Okay? Um, and uh, we learned all of these things. I mean, you, you, you had all of these things were learned occurrences. When the first time you, when you were an infant and the first time you hurt your finger, if you watch little kids, it's hysterical. They hurt themselves, and then they start screaming, but they don't even look at what, they're, what they hurt. They're just like randomly screaming and holding their arms up. They have no idea what they actually hurt because the brain hasn't figured out. All it got was an impulse coming in, and the brain had no idea to do with the sensation. It recognized it as pain, but it didn't know where it's coming from, and it wasn't probably until like the second or third time that you stubbed your toe that you figured out, oh, that's coming from there, and then your brain begins the process of projection, and then you're aware of where it actually comes from. So this whole process is kind of a learned setup. So if you've never had a heart attack before, you can understand that it might make a mistake, and that's what's really going on in referred pain. All right, so we're going to be focused on the somatic senses in this video versus the special senses. There's a separate video for the special senses, but really, that's what we're talking about. The special senses are your vision, your touch, your balance, your hearing, your smell, your taste, that kind of stuff, okay? Everything else is called the somatic senses or general senses, as you'll see here, um, and things like uh, pain and temperature and touch, vibration, pressure, pretty much the stuff you can feel with your skin is considered a somatic sense, okay? So if you can kind of detect it with your skin, it's a somatic sense. If you need a special organ to be able to detect it, um, like your eye or your ear, it's gonna be a special sense. All right, so when we look at the receptors, okay, um, we're gonna have four big categories of receptors here. We're gonna have our pain receptors, the nociceptors, um, the thermoreceptors for temperature, the mechanoreceptors, or any time you push a pole or on a membrane, and the chemoreceptors. And what we're going to do is we're going to look at each of these in a little bit more detail uh, as we go through these slots. So you may have to pause this and actually go back and look at it, but the nociceptors or the pain receptors, okay? Um, and on your sheet, it asks you for location. So that's where we're found. Um, you got in the skin, um, in your joints, um, the periosteum, remember that fibrous covering on the outside of bones, uh, the walls of blood vessels, that's where the most of your pain receptors are, okay? And what are they actually sensitive to? If you get an extreme change in temperature, they, 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 they respond to that. Um, mechanical damage, they actually rip, start ripping apart tissues. Um, the most important thing is this, the dissolved chemicals, okay? So when you damage a cell, it actually, like, toxins essentially get released from the cells, and that travels to these nociceptors. So the dissolved chemicals travel here to the receptors, um, trigger them, they reach threshold, and transduction happens where it takes these chemicals and turns them into an action potential. We do have ways to block pain, so again, this isn't in your packet, but just kind of interesting, cool stuff. So we have ways to block pain. Um, endorphins and enkephalins, those are our natural pain blockers, um, and what they do is they uh, hyperpolarize those neurons, so even when they get stimulated, they don't reach threshold, okay, um, and therefore they don't send the action potential, they say send a lower frequency of action potential, so that's less pain. Um, and then aspirin and Tylenol work kind of, um, what they do is they reduce the chemicals released by the damaged tissues, so the less chemicals get to the receptors. So there's two different ways of doing it. This, this way kind of shuts down the neuron, the receptors. This 
results in less chemicals reaching the receptors, both of those weaker signal being sent to the brain. All right, thermoreceptors are our, our easiest one on here. We got two types. We got our hot and cold, pretty easy. Um, if, it's, if you touch something that's warmer than your skin temperature, it's going to trigger these hot receptors. If it's colder than your skin temperature, it's going to trigger the cold receptors. And these are the three big locations, the dermis, the bottom layer of your skin, your skeletal muscles, and then the hypothalamus. Remember, that's that central thermoreceptor that controls body temperature homeostasis. All right, so the next part is the mechanoreceptors. So mechanoreceptors, we'll skip the location for a second. Let's focus on what they're sensitive to. Anytime they get a cell gets stretched or, or one of these receptors gets stretched or pushed or crushed or that's compression, right, or twisted, um, it triggers it. Essentially, they're just mechanically gated channels. You remember that from the nervous system. Uh, they pop open, they reach threshold, and so forth. Um, so your big locations... Um, your skin and your joints, but you have them all over the place, guys. You have, the wall, have them in the walls of blood vessels that can just detect when a blood vessel gets stretched. Um, there's lots of different examples of these mechanoreceptors throughout the body, but the most famous ones are going to be your skin and your joints. In your packet, I do a special little focus on these proprioceptors, so I just find these cool. So they're a type of mechanoreceptor, guys, so they're one of the mechanoreceptors, um, but they're found in your joints and your muscles, and what they do is they constantly monitor the position of your body. So, for instance, close your eyes for a second and picture your right hand, okay? And without looking, you can feel the position. You, you can actually know exactly how your right hand is positioned, your, your right finger, whether it's straight or how far it's bent and so forth. Um, now, wiggle the fingers back and forth. You can feel that movement. All of those things come from these proper receptors, and they're really cool. We wouldn't be able to play musical instruments without this because right we, we, we can actually we got to be able to feel our body move we wouldn't be able to walk without staring at our feet um, without these proper receptors are huge 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 um, and they send a whole lot some of it is conscious information um, but a lot of it is subconscious information and a lot, a lot of it goes to that cerebellum remember how it kind of fine tunes our movements um, uh, and, and that's what a lot of that information is so it can kind of detect the stretching of our body we start to lean to the right um, your, all these muscles are going to send information, all these little receptors are going to send information in there and try and correct it as we go along. Okay? So they're really cool. They allow us to do lots and lots and lots of cool things. Uh, pretty much any time you do something without actually move, without actually looking at the muscle moving, but you can tell how it's moving, that's due to your proper receptors. All right, last category is our chemoreceptors. So our chemoreceptors, um, they... Uh, respond, so what do they actually respond to? So they're, they're receptors that can respond to water-soluble and lipid-soluble substances that are dissolved, and that's really important. They have to be dissolved. Um, we don't um, absorb anything, or we don't detect anything with chemoreceptors that aren't dissolved. And with the cardiovascular system, they do important things like now, they're going to be really important for taste and smell. That's going to be where we're talking mostly about these chemoreceptors. But they also monitor things like pH, the hydrogen ion concentration, the carbon dioxide level, the oxygen levels. Um, so they're going to be kind of important for those types of things. Um, and for the other senses, it says, what other senses do you think? Kind of gave that away already. Uh, your taste and smell, dissolved chemicals. So when food comes in your mouth, dissolves in your saliva, that's what triggers the receptors. When, when chemicals go into your nose, dissolves in your mucus, that's what triggers the receptors. So that'll carry us through the, uh, the somatic senses, guys. Uh, we're going to spend a lot of time focusing on the special senses, taste, smell, hearing, vision, uh, balance. We'll get through all of that stuff. Uh, but that's just your brief introduction. Come in tomorrow. Make sure you have your stuff circled. Um, anything you're confused on, make sure you ask right away. Have a great night.